So this will be a fun video. What we're going to do is look into changing these, these pushers that Sharon uh, often updates for the current website. You'll note that if we reload the page a couple times, let's go ahead and reload the page, that they should change. Let's try it again. Right, okay. And the reason that that happens is we have a set of these things and they're stored in an array. And every single time the page loads, there's a PHP script that randomly selects two from the array to uh, put on the front page. So it's actually going to be very easy to change these. We're going to go to our dashboard. So go back to your dashboard and we're going to click on posts. Right? And you can see that we have all of the pushers here. And the reason that they're pushers is because they've been categorized as pusher posts. Notice that one of them is uncategorized, so it's not going to show up. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to click on that. Okay. Great. So right now, <clears throat> there is a featured image. And actually, one thing I wanted to show you was you can actually drag these items up and make them more accessible for you, for you, just, just for your user account. So I've put the featured image here. Here's the Ginter Park closing uh, featured image. The other thing I want to point out is that if you go to screen options at the top, there is, there's a bunch of uh, items that you can add to your editor. And the one that I'm going to ask that you put up is excerpt. Okay? And then you can close this. And the reason that we want to do that is on the front page, the excerpt here is going to be displayed. So that's, that's kind of a small uh, snippet of the post. And then when you actually click on the post, it'll show you all of this text. So let's go back to the front page. You can see this is the excerpt for libra Library Yarns at Belmont. And then if we read more, we might see a different, yeah, and we do. We see a different set of text here. Okay. So how do we add a new post? Pusher post, to be exact. Let's click on Posts. And then we'll go to Add New. And I heard recently that Finding Dory is coming out soon, the video, the movie. So I'm going to type Finding Dory uh, at main, right? <laughs> and let's just find some content. So I'm going to go to google.com. Or actually, why don't we just type in Finding Dory? Is it Dory or? Oh, shoot, I spelled it wrong. All right, whatever. So let's go to IMDb. And OK, great. Look at this. So this looks like something that we can use for the excerpt. So I'm going to copy that and go back to our post and plug that into the excerpt. OK. And then let's find something for the body. So here's this. I'm going to duplicate this tab and go back. And maybe we'll see something. OK, Wikipedia, great. And I'm just going to copy all this text. Copy all that text. And then go back to the body. And there it is. It's all pasted there. Notice that all these links, they're all going to work too, which is very nice. And finally, we want to set a featured image so that it's displayed on the front page. So let's go back here. We'll go to Gallery. Okay, and that looks like a good one. So I'm going to put that there. And now if I double click on it, there's our picture. Now before you put this as a featured image, we need to make sure that it is the right size because we want it to be consistent in terms of aspect ratio with all of the other pusher posts. Okay. So I'm going to bring up Photoshop. Let's see what I've got on Photoshop here. OK, so here's Photoshop. And I've got the Ginter Park one. So why don't we check out what the size is that we have. Hold on a second. Uh, let's go to image size and drag that over here. So we've got 264 uh, by 100. And really, we just need to maintain this aspect ratio 
It's all that really matters. 264 uh, for the width and 100 for the height. Okay. So I'm just going to, where is it? There it is. Let's drag this into here. And we'll go to the image size. And actually, we can just crop it. Let's just crop it. So let's do a 264 by 100 crop. Great. And then we can kind of position it however we want to. We could even we could even make it smaller if we wanted to. I actually liked it the way it was. Let's leave it like that. And hit OK, or Enter. And then save as. Whoa, what's going on? What's up with this help menu? OK, I'm just going to hit Control S. <laughs> It wants to be like that. Okay, great. So now it's been saved as a JPEG, and I'll drag that back onto the screen. Here it is. And there it is. Great. Let's go back to our post. And first things first, let's change this to Finding Dory spelled correctly. Go down to Set Featured Image, and we're just going to drag this featured image right into our media library and set featured image at the bottom there. Okay, so everything looks good to me for now. I'm going to hit publish. Okay, and now we can go back to the, the home page and reload a couple times and see whether we can find it. So let's see whether it, it comes up out of the array. There it is. Now, did you notice how when it loaded, it kind of it took a little while, but th the reason that that's happening is that the image is too big. And I've actually got Laurel, our design expert, here to talk about how to save images for the web. And I highly recommend that you do this via Photoshop. Uh, they've, the capabilities of Photoshop are just incredible. Without much further ado, here's Laurel. Okay, so Max already showed you how to resize this image so that it would fit well within the featured image slot on the pusher. So what that didn't solve was the picture loading very slowly, and that's because of the actual file size of this image. So what we're going to do to fix that is instead of just saving the image like you would any other document, Photoshop has this great capability to actually save images so that they're optimized for the web. So what you do is you go up to File, and instead of choosing Save As, choose Save for Web. And what this is going to do is it's going to give you all kinds of different options for how you want the colors and the detail to be displayed. and you can see how that changes the image and the file size. The best thing to do is make sure that this tab, this two up, is the view that you're using. You can either look at the original or this is just the changed version. But I find that by viewing them side by side, you can really see how much of the image quality you're losing. Because the goal is to lose as little image quality as possible while also getting the smallest file size. For the sake of the library website, we're going to keep it very simple. And the best thing to do is just go up to this little file format dropdown and select JPEG. And we want it to stay in high quality because this is a featured image. We don't want it to diminish too much. And I'll just show you what that would look like. So if you chose low, you can see that this became much more pixelated, and it's just not as pretty of an image. But by keeping it at high quality, there's not a whole lot of loss in between these two. You can also change the image size if you want down here. Um, and I think that Max will be working to determine just what image size you guys are going to want to use. But it'll keep that same aspect ratio that you already cropped the image to. And the other thing I want to draw your attention to is you can see that this first photo, the original that you were working with, it was 1.1 megabytes in file size, which is pretty big for one image. By just 
coming in and saving it for web, even though this is still a high quality image, we've reduced it to a tenth of the size. Okay, and then you just choose save once you have these all set up and save it as usual.